far as I know. Yeah. Uh, as far as I left, and he was uh, coming back in to get his copies. And oh, okay. Deborah made him copies. Yeah. Okay. Knew it. All righty. Well, let's go ahead and get the meeting started. And today we don't have a speaker, but we're doing um, an update on the technology and the archives progress that's going on over uh, at the old jail building. And we are going to discuss just some other various uh, items that have been mentioned. Um, our speaker for next month is going to be, and forgive me if I did not write down a name, uh, right. someone from the Mississippi Department of Archives and History who's going to be talking to us a little bit more about uh, digitizing the records at the archives and um, helping us a little bit with that. Do we have um, anybody lined up for a, a program in the future? April is going to be a lady named Meredith Gray, G R A Y. I really don't know if she's she's a historian over in Marshall County, and she's associated with the museum over there. And so she's going to be our April speaker, and uh, we got a real well-known Joan from County-wide speaker for May. Tommy Covington back here. Oh, I'm not oh man. <laughs> I have a DVD. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to present a, a, a CD on Paul Rainey. Paul Rainey. That'd be good. Yeah. Okay. Any other speakers? Yeah. Well, if anybody has, you know, anybody speaker they like to, just, you know. So we're good through May right now. That gets caught up on, on way on through the spring, and then as we approach, we can look at suggestions and find some more people, or just take a break from speakers if we need to conduct some business, and we'll just play it by ear from there then. All right. Uh, does anybody have any announcements? I do. Go for it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Libby Bryant suggested that the Tippecanoe County Historical <coughs> Society participate in a program to be determined later in the downtown historical district. Uh, she has some ideas, and she didn't say how we could participate, but she likes uh, building a park across from the Methodist Church, and somebody's involved in it. You know where they before H raised their veggies last mm -hmm. year, uh, and uh, that was one. Uh, she said, "Might even turn into a maybe a veterans memorial or something if you like that." But those are babies, and she's available for a meeting. If you want to have her and tell you what the programs are. She also likes the uh, J.W. Duncan House. I think Mr. King used to live there. And she liked the idea of having a historic home to be included in tours and places for little girls to get married. Former uh, How am I doing? Okay. okay. <laughs> doing great. Uh, here's some problems that interested me, so I wrote them down. Steve Rutherford to explain the world's best genealogical site online. Uh, funeral director to explain what funeral directors do. He has the best genealogical page I know of. That's it. Steve Rutherford. Uh -huh. Yeah, he does. How about a speaker from the UDC or the DAR? I've, I've spoken to the the daughters of the Confederacy on several occasions, and they always buy me gifts and say that I'm the best speaker they ever heard, and so I think it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reciprocate. Meet in the library and examine the sources in the genealogy room. And I could use a program on the DNA project because I swab my mouth and send it in. I have no idea what that means. And Mark told me it meant that I was an organ donor and I'd be getting a letter from the hospital real soon. <laughs> <laughs> they thought your time was near. <laughs> it probably won't show you a free preacher. <laughs> Listen, I have a preacher friend that was kidnapped, literally kidnapped out of the parking lot one time. And he said, now don't hurt me, I'm a preacher. And, and he said they told him that they hated preachers and he would get the worst of it before they died. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Well, going off of something that you mentioned uh, that Main Street was talking about, this might be hopefully a good time to kind of head that off, uh, talking about uh, veterans 
memorial. Um, I wasn't really gonna say a whole lot about it because it's not a done deal yet, but my son has got to get a, an Eagle Scout project together uh, for him to Eagle, and he's just right at the point where he's got to get his project together. And one thing that he had wanted to do was do a veterans memorial in the new park uh, out west of town. So that was something that he was kind of thinking about working on. Uh, getting some ideas for work, so the, the, the not widely known. Gonna, the little girl's going to do the park anyway. Good. And then if we can participate <laughs> a garden park or something. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess to, to try to try to head that one off if, if we can, if we can make his project pan out, uh, that there is some ideas in the works for that, and I know he would be really, really thrilled to uh, have the historical society's input and maybe help with it. And, and that stuff, because I know I remember um, Miss Evelyn Jameson had mentioned when we did right. World War Two, uh, World War Two uh, Memorial, and um, that was. Yeah. Yeah. That was Jim. Yes, ma'am. You like so. that? <laughs> you have to enjoy coming to these too. You like being here with us, remember? In a couple I do. Yeah. And he wants me to check him out of school so he can come, <laughs> but I, I, I just didn't think I was going to get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like I said, that's not really out yet. But. Did, you, did, you tell, did you tell Jim's dad, I was sorry that I spoke bluntly to him when I had him in a fifth grade class for a vacation Bible school? Oh, no. I We're used to, we all speak bluntly. Has he, has he mentioned, <laughs> has he mentioned it to you? Does he hate my country? No. He left your hat. He left my hand. He does. <laughs> does anybody else have any more announcements? Tell her about the project. Oh, yes. She's going to bring you up today, do not you? Well, Felicia's the one that's been doing all the, what? What are we talking about? The Antioch Project. Oh, the Antioch Project. Well, I've got all of the, I've got a spreadsheet done of the names of, and with the births and the deaths listed on there for each person that's buried at Antioch. Um, I've got a place so we can insert plot number. Do, and I thought about this last night, and I may be getting it over my head before I have the mission, <coughs> but do we want a, um, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, where? GPS. Thank you, that's the word I'm looking for, a GPS <laughs> location. I, the reason I ask is the gentleman that was here from Oklahoma uh, this past week, he said, he was showing me what all he'd done. He said he'd been doing genealogy since 77. And he said if he had a GPS marker for any for a grave site, he always listed it as part of his reference. So that not just the name of the cemetery, but his GPS of locate location. I hope I have access to a GPS locator. <laughs> you can use my hair. Oh, okay. All right. Well good. I, I think my husband has one and they <laughs> might let us borrow it, but <laughs> I don't have to disconnect it from the car or anything. Oh, okay. Little, little garment like that. And yeah. Catfish has one. Okay. Uh, well, good. Uh, Any of GPS is on the ground. All of them? No. She wants no, to do it stone for stone. Yeah. We're, we're doing stone for stone. Wow. Okay. Are they, are they accurate enough to, to have a separate reading for yeah. each grave? Yes. Yeah. Three or four feet apart? Yes. It'll well, be in the well, same county. The, uh, <laughs> what's that? The yeah. little garment is not. It's not. It, it, well, the, <coughs> the, the, yeah, the one that the power company uses uh, is within uh, micro inches, I think. Or it will be that. I, think, well, I think they told us they were good for 15 uh, feet of all the satellites. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll see if I can get it, and maybe I can even yeah, talk him into coming and running it for us or something. You know, but that would be a really, really nice to add on. Yeah, because yeah. some of the grave sites I noticed did have the GPS setting for it, but some of them don't. Mm. So. Well, you know, it, in finding the grave, there is a place for a GPS. For it. That's not right. just the cemetery, but the grave. Yeah. That's right. That's right. She said, if I let in my grave, yeah. yeah. And and when well, no. when y'all decide that we're getting ready to yeah. go do that, yeah. I'll print out the list. It's about Less thirty pages of it. So. Okay. Okay. Is that all? Oh, well, no, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm just guessing. I think it's more than that. Well, it could be. Don't, 
My suggestion would be not to print it out. Because two sons. Yeah, well, no. No. Because. You think other people are going to die before school? <laughs> <laughs> One already has. One already has. <laughs> Uh, after we put the after we put this other information, in, <coughs> well, I think it would be better time to print it out. Yeah. I mean, that might save a printing. You know. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I wouldn't plan it on printing it until right before time to leave. Yeah. More. Also, there's a I printed out a list of the historical society membership that I had. There are. Some addresses missing, some phone numbers missing, and quite a few email number uh, email addresses missing. So if you'll check yours and anybody you might know that's not here and write in on that paper, then I'll enter it and I'll print out copies for anybody that wants a printed copy. Then and I'll email to whoever I have email addresses for. That's how I found out a lot of them were wrong. Was I emailed to everybody? <laughs> I got quite a few back saying, "Uh, uh, I can't deliver." It. But anyway, um, on the Antioch project, uh, do we already have something drawn out with the plots labeled, or is that what we need to need to be working on before we go? We don't we don't have it drawn out. We've got a map, a good uh, a photo map. Oh, but it doesn't divide itself into eight sections by internal roads like the river cemetery. Mm -hmm. I guess, do we need to go ahead and have those already drawn off and numbered before we get out there and get to looking and... Or do well, we need to do that as we do That's what we got to do first. <coughs> go ahead and okay. number them. Okay. And since some run this way and some run that way and some run this way, uh, we right now we don't know what we're going to do. Okay. The, uh, one of the men on the board said, would you like for us to put up markers on the margin ever so often and just draw straight lines? And I said yes, but I don't know if he's in favor of doing that or not. I think we need to have uh, one of them to come to our meeting. Maybe in maybe March might be soon enough for them to come and sort of give us an idea of what they think. Who is who over there right now? Uh, Danny Linville is, uh, I think, the president of the group. Committee. Uh, I've got a list of them. Uh, Edwin Shelton, Charles Shelton is on it. Um, Joey Bryant, um, Willie Bryan. Uh, I think there's about seven or eight on the committee. So, so we need to have some of them before they have another committee meeting uh, to uh, maybe bring us up to date on what they what they suggest. They were wondering about how to separate the section one from section two, what kind of marker they might could use to at the front of the cemetery on, on how to separate section one from section two. So I don't know what they come up with on that. Would, would the spray paint like they paint uh, on the grass and stuff help for <coughs> It, it might help as long as we're working there. Yeah. Uh, Somebody suggested we get the, the emergency tape and just mark our place all over. Like caution, don't mm -hmm. cross the police line? Yeah. I think that was you. We need to sound like that. We need something to get from front to back yeah. while we're working, at least. Uh, so we won't, but, you know, won't cross over. There's some on the class or something. Mm -hmm. That's good. Once we do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything further on the Antioch project? Other business. Mm -hmm. We have a visitor today. Al's group is coming to see him. Right, let's, so he's my I don't want to. I had to stretch it to an hour and a half. Well, I think that's good. As long as I get back to the sweatshop sometime soon. <laughs> 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 We're very glad to have you back. Well, I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be here. Sorry. Is that doing anything with the Stroop family tree that interests you? Anything? Mm -hmm. Kind of sort. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, just 
dealing with bringing information? I mean, I, I've been I've been updating my family tree with you know with the true plan. Mm -hmm. yeah, are you yeah, interested? Yeah. You want to know? Well, I just thought about this. <laughs> my brother was a lot of age, Jimmy Covington. Those of you who are on my, in my email address book already know about this. But he's retiring and he needs things to do. So he's taking this on to uh, try to correct something. I tell him it's a lost cause. <laughs> the fact is, there is no such legal holiday as President's Day. It's George Washington's birthday, according to the federal laws. Mm -hmm. there, there was a, a bill that was in the committee that was going to make it President's Day, and it failed in the committee. And when the law was passed, it was designated as George Washington's birthday, the third Tuesday, uh, Monday in uh, February. So I, I'm going to tell him that I <laughs> tried to help him out. <laughs> That's of historical interest. So. <laughs> I did not know that. Well, if, you own, if you own a mattress uh, place or furniture, you go to still call it a Christmas holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but it's George Washington's birthday. While he's doing that, I wish he would designate February as uh, All American Month instead of Black History Month, All American History Month. Or, not just black American history. Right. And we've got Irish American history for you. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's March 14th, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, I think it's right after Native American. Oh, oh. <laughs> Christine, um, I just wanted y'all to know that I've submitted an application for a grant for to get a nice table and chairs at the archives for people to come and do their research. Oh, now, right. I don't know that I'm going to get it, but it doesn't hurt to ask. <laughs> That's a train. And it's from Target. That <coughs> Tipper and Ripley growing excellence together, I think is what they stand for. So, anyway, since I used the Historical Society's name, I want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who has been over there and been working over there want to kind of give us a brief update on what all's going on with the archive? Uh, the Historical Society is now the proud owner of a printer, copier, scanner that will do up to 11 by 17. Um, we've just been following. What else have I done? Filing? Filing? Mm -hmm. Filing. And helping the yard there. Oh, and we have officially opened Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays from 10 o'clock in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. So if anybody's free and wants to come help. Have we did an update on the supervisors? I did. I went and spoke with the Board of Supervisors on the 31st. I asked them, basically asked them for a key. And they see no problem with it. I'm waiting on Rodney to produce a key. Um, I did mention to them the possibility of an archives director. They said they are taking that into consideration. Uh, what else did I say to them? That's all I got right now. Um, we have to remember that the circuit clerk was responsible for the records. Uh, I am also um, going to be on the agenda whenever the Board of Directors for the Development Foundation has another meeting to get them to uh, pretty much uphold their end on why the new TCDF building was actually built where it was built. You know, we are supposed to have a research area right there in the front, and so I'm going to see why we don't have what we're supposed to have in that office. Well, that's, that area you're talking about is where this grant that she's writing is. Right, for, for right. That area. right. Pat wants to know if you can put it in Mr. Buller's old storage room. Yeah, he's, he's just <laughs> to Mr. He is 
moving it out. There's a lot of it down. A lot of it is down. There are still a few things left, but it does look much better. And we have also, um, anytime anybody wants to work on the files, we can go in the Development Foundation office and use their big table in the back. So we don't have to wait to have a meeting at the library. <coughs> Just whenever you get ready, Tuesday through Thursday, we'll fix you up in the Development Foundation office. It's handicapped accessible. Yes, it is. Well, I tried to stuff her in that little elevator and it wouldn't work. No, I don't. When it's I was really carrying hard. that uh, copier in the archives, I could not get it in the door. I had to, Deborah had to come help me. I mean, there's no way you could fit through there. And Randy has said, Randy Graves has said that as soon as the February court uh, session is over, I don't know what day that is, but he said that he would, because his inmate, his trustee was, had been released on parole that he liked to use for things, he would find out who, uh, who could be <coughs> trusted to come and help move files from the attic in the courtroom down and bring over to the, over to the archives. What is left in the attic? Oh, lots, worlds and lots, worlds, really worlds of stuff. Books. He said there was a lot of books that we wouldn't need, but there was there's still uh, docket books, there's still uh, there's still boxes of case files and stuff. I found the receipt for my license plate from ten years ago laying on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of that laying on that floor ten yeah, years ago. But we have Kind of cleaned up upstairs so whenever they get ready to bring that stuff up we have a place to put it upstairs um, I'm also going to move a bookshelf upstairs to accept donations Mavis is going to donate some things family history books pictures so we'll have a place for those we, we, we got our own historical archival place now yeah we just add a key to it. My wife is here, so what do you say? She watches us. I just give you a big old hug. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm going to put a bookcase up there. We kind of, I, I gave uh, Felisa my grand tour of what it was in my head. And we have a research room, a work area upstairs, as well as the work area in the TCDF office. And we need to we need to think about we uh, we have quite a few maps that are rolled up and they really need to be flattened out. We really need to to see if anybody is dispensing with any map tables that have the drawers. Those I was told wonderful. that there were, and which I haven't gone over there to talk to Ron Reno yet, but there are old the old map hangers. See if there's one that. You know, there might be a little something wrong with that they're, they're not using. Because we have the blueprints to the post office. So we've got to do something new. We've got all kinds of nice blueprint size maps and, and all kinds of stuff, but they don't need to be rolled up standing on their hand. They need to be laid out. Got blueprints to the courthouse go over there, too. Well, that may be in that box with the, I just yeah. know that the post office is in there. But if we had, if we had that, if we had the drawer type table or mm -hmm. filing cabinet, I guess is what you call it for maps, then we could label the outside as to whether they were blueprints for specific buildings or what years the maps were from and that kind of thing. I didn't know there's a long. Is there wall space over in the world? Walls, 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 space. Upstairs. Upstairs. Yeah. Upstairs, yeah. Just real ones, and I wonder just. Sure. But then again, they all need to be laid flat and brought, <laughs> brought back to unrolling status. <laughs> what do you call that? A map? Table? Not They're map cabinets. Map cabinets. Cabinet. Cabinet. I'll talk to Danny and see if he knows of any electric companies that might be getting rid of that kind of stuff. Because they're all the time swapping used materials and stuff. How is K 
pretty much set up a computer and everything working. It okay, is we all used it working early. now. It is. It is working. <laughs> And the gentleman will be here March the 18th from, from um, Jackson. Uh, Tim Bernard is the guy that I was talking to. He said he was here last summer. And he's going to bring two gentlemen with him. And I'm sorry I did not bring the email nor the, their names. But one of them is in, um, in digital imaging. And the other one is in records keeping. And so they're going to look at our stuff and hopefully then come over and kind of give us a where to go from here attack plan. So. Have we been using the camera set up? Yes, just scan. Is if the quality is good excellent. and no trouble getting it. Now that I have it fixed, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. okay. We do need to talk about a couple of things that have to do with money. Um, what we're talking about, we do have a nice new printer. And um, pursuant to our discussion last month, um, I believe we had authorized a flatbed scan or had a separate copy, copy scan print printer uh, to come out of uh, the donation from Ms. Coley. So the total price on the printer with the two-year service plan was about two eighty. While she was there, she bought us a wireless mouse for the computer, which we needed, and a couple of rings of copy paper. The question is. We know that we want the printer and the service plan to come out of the special fund. Do how do we want to go about funding the copy paper and the mouse? Do we want to just roll that roll the whole thing in there or do we want to just pay that out of the general fund? Well the paper will be continuously. Mm -hmm. Is there any way you can get a service contract on that printer? <laughs> Sooner or later, you're going to have a problem. That's, that's it. That's a two-year two service contract, Emma. If anything if messes if up, anything or, messes up yeah. I can take the whole thing back. They'll replace it. Good. Service. Anything, he said, anything except for theft. They cover everything <laughs> except for theft. Hey, the county's got us covered there. <laughs> oh, well, they should. <laughs> should don't mean he is. Don't count on their money. So, I make a motion to go ahead and pay for the printer and service plan out of the special designated fund and for the rest to come out of general. I'll second, I'll second to Mr. Covington and all in favor? Aye. All right. Anybody opposed? Okay. All right. I'd like, I'd like somebody to write to me in Charlotte a little note thanking them for it and, and telling them what we bought. Um, that's the secretary's job. I was going to say, who just care of that? Deborah's got their address. She, she would write it. Deborah over there, she would write it. Um, or maybe it ought to come from the historical yeah, society. It probably should, yeah. should come from the historical society. Oh, we're speaking at least the same thing. Yeah, right. So. Well, we'll get it up with Ms. Patricia then, and and have, we'll, we'll let her take care of that. Have, have you bought a scanner also? This is it's a... It does it all. This does that's it. everything? Mm -hmm. And it was just 280 something mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. That's big. Two paper trays. It will copy, scan, Okay. Uh, up to 11 by and 17. Okay. Did, it, did either one of y'all look at that in detail, this thing that will copy... A, a book that's open and flatten it out. That. I've never heard of anything like I that. that. Oh. I'd like to more, know more about that. <laughs> you might want one of those. Uh, yeah. the, the only thing I was worried about with that, would that be redundant to our camera setup that we've got going on? It might be. Yeah, it might be. So, it's so looking, it's looking like we didn't need the camera. 
Well, my well, question is, if we've only spent approximately $300 of this money, what do we need to do with the rest of it? Because we discussed the handheld scanners and... How much do we have? We've got approximately $26,700 left. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's the only thing that's been bought out of that money, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, didn't, didn't they, didn't Charlotte and Anita, uh, didn't they specify a handheld scanner? They Can did. you find a good one? I don't know that any of them are really good. Yeah. Just to be honest. Um, I think they'd be agreeable with whatever we do with it. I think, yeah. With the money. You may want to go back to them and ask I them if there's anything additional that they would like to see done with it. I think that's. And, and they might just idea. say whatever is needed. I mean, you know. Yeah. If I think maybe needed. we should have some ideas to present to them instead of just saying what. Well, I'll say some things that we need. My, my, idea, my personal opinion, being over at the archives, <laughs> I did set the one that we have now, it is set up downstairs in the hall. It would be nice to even, it would be the same thing to have another one upstairs where the computer is. That way, whoever's working and researching for somebody, you don't have to go all the way upstairs, or if you're looking at something upstairs, you don't have to come all the now way that, downstairs. That's a good idea. Yeah. And with the price, yes, you could definitely to do it. You can explain, yeah, you can explain that to them in the little yes. thank you note. Yeah. yeah, and it wouldn't hurt to have a couple more folding chairs there either, just plain folding chairs inside the archives. Yeah, we do need to see about some more furniture inside the archives, but I was going to... That ought to be paid the for. County yeah, I was going to talk to Rodney. Yeah. yeah, they have in storage. They just, just workable space. <laughs> I know, even if it wasn't, you know, some stacking chairs that we didn't have to have out all the time. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now there's That'll only two chairs in the whole building. And I've got a couple of people coming tomorrow. So, I mean, it's... Well, I used a paint bucket the other day because I needed to be higher and then I needed to be lower. Mm -hmm. And I used it to stand on and sit on to get to the different files. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be crowded. If you have people that are working and mm -hmm. researching, researching, yeah, you kind of start running you out of... safe ladders if you need a ladder? No, we don't have anything, but we don't have anything up high enough yet, though, oh, okay. either. I will say I I know at the Chancery Clerk's office they have those little you know little bucket things and when you step right. up they go down yeah, steps too but yeah that, like they do at the libraries mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Those are good yeah. too. Um, but that's I think I think what we need to do and not necessarily anything formal but I think we need to get us a, a committee of folks who are over there all the time and let's just let's make a wish list of things that maybe we could we could use and maybe things that we and purchase that's not someone else's responsibility, you know, right. to take care of right. maybe some things and get those ideas <coughs> going before we. Those three, my three, my three my things would, you know, if we had four more chairs, uh, just folding chairs, and like you say, the little step stool uh, that helps right. you file and stuff, <coughs> and, and then the filing drawer for the maps. Those three things are would be more than helpful. A map, one of those map cases with the drawers like this is going to take a lot of room. They're like, they're like four But minutes. they well, have the, the hang, I, I would like the hangers. The hang they're right. like on four legs. I, they may be takes, a foot deep. Right, it takes a lot less You just punch holes in the there. top and right. then maybe tab what it was. Yeah, that takes a lot I, less I know space. that they probably have some of those at the courthouse that they're not using. I just have not stopped long enough to talk to Rhonda. I don't think there's enough space in the in the old jail to, to put all the records that they've got up there to move. I think we're gonna run out of space. I did talk to Rodney about the cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. Instead of the big plastic, yeah. maybe start ordering the cardboard boxes, which wouldn't be there. as heavy yeah. and we could start getting stuff on the top shelves. Mm -hmm. That might be good. You might get more of them on the shelf too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, then we would need one of those little 
little ladders that yeah. were just like mm -hmm. this time that had the handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're much safer. Yeah, he had asked me did I want to start replacing the plastic. I told him I wouldn't replace it. Yeah, but just, I just add. start mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. for the top shelf mm -hmm. especially. Because yeah. <coughs> you can't. We were moving boxes mm -hmm. around the other day, and I thought I was going to die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you can't. Well, they're too, they're too they're too are those the ones with all the folders in them? Mm -hmm. Those all work. Um, yeah, you quit filing pretty quickly if you have to move more than five or six of them. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> it's like, okay, my day's done now. <laughs> all righty, and the only other thing that I had uh, right off top of your head <laughs> was, um, Consider maybe setting up a PayPal account to let people pay us for copy fees and et cetera, et cetera. Um, when you have a PayPal account, it's pretty much where um, a person can send you money as payment either through a credit card or through their bank account. Um, and they don't, we don't have to physically have like a credit card machine or anything. Uh, to be able to accept a payment physically, it's all done electronically. And so that was a suggestion um, that we get one of those set up. Where the funds go, like if I need if I need to pay uh, Brother Jerry for something and he has a PayPal <coughs> account, um, I can punch in my credit card number, it sends it to his account, which is linked to his bank account, and it goes straight to his bank account. That's pretty much the way that works. I mean, that would just link it to your bank account. <laughs> and, and that basically just makes it people that are asking <coughs> for research mm -hmm. faster for them to get what they want. Right. We have a cop. We have notification that they paid it. They'll have a copy of where they paid it, mm -hmm. and it will just it expedite. Oh yeah, so much faster. Them getting their stuff instead of us having to wait on a, a check to be mailed in. Right. Or, or and then you know if where if they write a check, is the check gonna clear? Mm -hmm. They fail to take some fee out of that, so don't they? Yeah, it's 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 small. Yes, yes. It's, um, I think it's worth it. It's three. Worth it's fee. like three percent yes. of whatever their total is. We would have to set up a bank account. We should already have a bank account, shouldn't we? Well, do you want to use? Or it, it will just. I mean, it'll hold it in there until you get ready to transfer it to wherever you want it. Right, but I mean, um, um, would we want to use the account? For the historical society, or would you want to set up a separate one? I think it would be a separate account. I don't think it would be the one Tommy takes care of. Well, plus, we'll I also need to think about maybe some together. sort of petty cash at the archives when people come. That's true. You'll right. need to. And that's what we can use to replenish our whatever. paper and stuff like that. Right. Have you got prices established? We do. Uh, 75 cents. Per page copied, um, and then it's five dollars for anything burned to a CD, and then fifty cents for anything over twenty pages to that CD, and a two dollar mailing fee. Uh, how about uh, how about the website? Anything on it? I get stuff on it all the time. Uh, on hours? Yes. It's kind of it's kind of plain. Anybody that's got any ideas of something to put on there, I'll I know on we it. need pictures. We need <coughs> things to make people keep coming back to it. I've tried to think of stuff. I, I did. Here. I did go the other day and put links to the Development Foundation okay. to um, Melissa Bell's website uh, to find a grave. I mean, just. Uh, there is an archives page on there that tells when the archives is open and has all of the copy information. I did change the mailing address for research requests to the Development Foundation office. So she's got a stack for a place where anything we get, she'll have it put aside for us. Whoever wants to look it up. Is that the one that Robert set up? The website? 
No, yeah, Jessica said I did that. that. I don't think Robert ever got finished with it, did he? No. Who monitors the uh, email? I do. Yeah. I think y'all do it great. I'm glad to see it moving along. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. All right, does anybody have any other business? Well, I don't know who all will be interested, but the uh, Southern Confederate Veterans is going to the, there's a doctor, Brandon Beck, retired from Virginia, going to Columbus, and he wrote a, a book about Oklahoma, the Battle of Oklahoma, and the driving tour around. We're going to meet at 10 o'clock this coming Saturday at the cemetery there in Oklahoma, and he's going to escort us around, you drive, stop, get out, he'll talk to you. And so it's a once-in-a-lifetime chance to get a guided tour. Then there's a reenactment that afternoon, and uh, sutlers, a guy selling stuff. And then we'll have a real big auction at the uh, barbary there in Oklahoma. Of course, the reenactment that's going to be in June at Bryce's Crossroads is going to be a lot bigger. If you've never been to one, you need to go to one. And uh, that would be a lot bigger, but this is a just a chance to have a uh, guy show us around. We're going to meet at Walmart at 9. We're going to meet at that cemetery at 10 o'clock if anybody's interested. What day is that? It's coming Saturday. Weather's supposed to be nice. <laughs> he's, a, he's got his PhD. Uh, he's uh, he read several books. He's part of the Benton County Veterans. What's that? You said <clears throat> Is he part of the Benton County Veterans? <laughs> you said Dr. Beck? I asked Brandon Beck. He lives in Columbus now. I, I, asked him, I asked him that question and he said he's still trying to prove it. He said he uh, thought he was, but he hadn't proved it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't know, Tommy, about the Treasury report, but every time we turn around, it's like, what's the historical club going to do for this or that? And, and like your son on the Eagle. I still wish we had some kind of fundraiser. I, I'm going to try to get Libby, uh, Brian, or Brian, to come one time and let her know that, you know, we, we need to get involved somehow or another, but we can't help all these people out. It would be great to help them worthwhile causes, because they're all trying to say, what's the historical club going to do? Well, well, I don't know how we're fixed on finances. How are we fixed, Tom? We have... Uh Seven thousand six hundred thirty-five dollars more. But there's more money coming in. Let's go shopping. Let's go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting that out of just the ten dollar dues. Well, I had wondered if I needed to on the website, you know, say that we accept donations, not just pictures, you know, and family books, but monetary to be able to do some of these other things. I mean, is, would y'all want me to do that? Yeah. Definitely. Yes. I mean, would it be? Mm -hmm. I've, I've had three people, uh, I noticed they're on my old directory list, but I had three people just because I copied something for them, uh, sent views from other places, other other cities. Uh, there are generous people there. Give them a chance. I mean, the copying was like, 15, 20 cents a page or something, but uh, some three people sent us a year's deal. Yeah, are we set up as a as a an organization, a tax free For organization? Five oh one C three? Yeah. I you don't know. I don't I don't think I don't think so. I don't think they are club. Maybe we're not big enough to need that. <laughs> I know that Patricia has mentioned it several times, and I think she was kind of going to take that on to see, you know, just exactly what needed to be done or what we should do. I don't know what she's found out or done so far. I think that the only thing that that I would be concerned about when you when you I think when you set set yourself up and you register with the state as a non-profit organization, I think you're required to submit 
your bylaws, how you're going to establish your board of directors, your officers. Um, and I think there's a lot of different stuff that you have to go through to get all of that set up. Yeah. Well, um, well, I think that was her career, so I mean, if anybody knows, she'll be the one to know. And once you do that, you have to file each year. Each year, do. Because that's what we had to do with the theater. We had to file up. But I don't know if we have that many people contributing to go through all that trouble or not. Let it go like it is. Yeah. Well, and, and there may there may be laws that says you have to do X number before you do that. That may be true, yeah. too. Um, but I believe in order to... And, and it, it's, I'm sure it's not all of them, but I think in order to apply for some kinds of grants, I think you have to be set up to them. Yeah, sometimes grants you do. But, uh, yeah. I think maybe we need to get with her and let's get all the details on it and then we can re examine it at a later date if desired. Uh, the archives, unless somebody wants to fill in, will be closed March the 6th through whatever that next Thursday is, because I will be in Washington, D.C. and New York. Is that, uh, is that, that spring is spring break? break? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be here either. Um, so, and I will be at the National Archives. If anybody has a suggestion of something I can look mm -hmm. up. You go with the bank. I am. You want to take this place? No, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I got four more years and then I'll get to go. <laughs> Is the 6th through the next Thursday? Yeah, is the 13th. 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 Yeah. Well, I'm not being so intellectual. I'm going to I don't know, the charter bus with 6 <laughs> to 10 inch girls. <laughs> but I was smart enough to get my own hotel room. There you go. So, lots of, I may have to come see you for some anxiety medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got everybody on the bus hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, does anybody else have any other business, announcements? It helps the museum if you sign this list. Okay, everybody make sure that you sign the list. Um, make sure that you look and make sure your information is correct on these pages and please correct it if it isn't. And if you haven't, there's a card here for Miss Nancy who has not been able to be with us for a couple, three months and she's been not feeling very well. So if y'all make sure and sign that before you leave, that would be great as well. Anything further? Uh, if anybody wants to at least go look at the archives, Deborah should be there. Uh, she said if she's not there, she's run up to the Chantry office. She will be back shortly. And somebody is there 10 to 2. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, except making days. Yes. All right. That somebody will be. <laughs> I'm going to start coming and helping you during my lunch break, best I can. That, that's my plan. I mean, it's. Uh, I usually <laughs> take lunch, so. <laughs> yeah, that's my plan. Is yeah. the, is the, I take lunch. Is lunch and. Lunch if I make it into town, I usually call for a lunch date. So. <laughs> but we, I mean, I talk to the supervisors, and they are, they, uh, Kind of getting them on board, mm -hmm. you know. That's been the last thing on their plate. Of course, yeah. you know. I I kind of said I'll take charge if you let me take charge, and they kind of agreed with they, it. They looked at it with a blank look on their face. Yeah, <laughs> that was their agreement. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't object. <laughs> that's right. As long there as the go. word no does not come out, it did not come out of their mouth. I witnessed it. <laughs> You know, in the mail out, it says something you have to check with the, the clerk first or something. And I just wondered, did they understand that we had um, an independent organization and interest in that archive? So yeah. I mean, things did. They're understanding it on a regular basis when I'm sitting down in Rodney McBride's office once a week going, where's my key? I've done this, this, and this. Everything's under control. <laughs> Well, we, we, we didn't need this permission, but I got that from the from the mail out that they they thought it was something. In other words, they were dumping it on him, letting him worry about it. We had to, but uh, we're we're in our 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 part of the archive is independent of his, except we're willing to help him. Yeah. Well, I I kind of finally got him to understand that 
if he will just let us have at it, we will make sure everything is put where it needs to be put, stays where it needs to stay, it's better than he's got now. not destroy it, and nobody will walk out with any records. Right. Well, does, uh, we does, everybody, uh, does, does everybody understand that the equipment over there belongs to the Historical Society? Yes. It, we, and it does need to be tagged. I, yes. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. We need some way to identify so everybody serum. knows. And we need to put some... Uh, I want to say. Um, well, I didn't want to be tagging and, and go out. with a black permanent marker and write well, But you see, little tags yes. that you can yeah. put on there that says property of. Property right. of. Yeah. yeah. I we think need, we need to look at getting some of those. Right. Yeah. No, I think we do those. They need to be where you where it's obvious that who it belongs to. You might check with Mac Miller. He may know. That's true. Or he may he um, may print those. Jenny, Jenny Cole may know. Office products. Okay. We check around and find out. And look, nothing else. I'm sure we've ordered them on the internet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if not, well, it fails. <laughs> 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 so. All right, that is. Um, Once the membership roll is updated, can we have access? I, I'd like to have a copy. Well, if you give me your email address, I'll hit send you one and I'll print out some of it all is complete. Okay. I signed and put it on there today. You have it. I already have it. You have it. I do. Okay. All I will ask is that you make sure that what I have is correct. Oh, okay. okay. Make sure that what I have is correct. Because I think I left off an L off of, of Christie's and that's why hers didn't go through. You know, some fingers just don't work as fast as others. I understand that. Yeah, Dr. Sample's just being with And she could be real helpful being a, a, a doctor when we have to raise money. I'm sure she's going to help us. We're not a profit. What do we know about making money? She probably does. All right, does anybody have anything further? We want to make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Mr. Covington, second. <laughs> All in favor? Get up, go. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really.